John Collier's contemporary depiction of the Annunciation brings the story of Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel into our present reality. Collier's Annunciation stands on the shoulders of tradition, depicting the encounter in such a way that includes the standard symbols of the past. We see Mary and the angel face to face, Mary holding a book as a symbol of her piety. We see the lily as a symbol of her purity, the painted window as the symbol of her virginity, and the dove perching in the background as the symbol of the Holy Spirit. These symbols are the familiar language of many Annunciation scenes and connect this work to those from the great masters of the past. While using these familiar elements, Collier retells the story for our present day. Mary is a young schoolgirl with a ponytail, still in school uniform, and she lives in a suburban neighborhood. Her shoes are playfully untied. She must have just slipped back into them to come to the door. In bringing together past and present, Collier invites us to see the gospel scene not as a distant story, but as one unfolding in our lives here and now. As the story unfolds, the encounter between Mary and the angel reveals even deeper meaning. Mary is a young schoolgirl with untied shoelaces, but she's also a figure of strength, steadfastness, and faith. She looks squarely at the angel, who in contrast bows reverently before her paying homage to God's grace manifest in his lowly handmaid. The angel's presence is subtly liturgical. In his dress and posture, he resembles an acolyte serving at the altar, ready to adore the presence of the Lord who will in a moment become flesh in the body of this young girl. The angel as server is a beautiful anticipation of Christ's bodily presence in our midst first welcomed through the faithful yes of Mary. Standing at the door with Mary and Gabriel, we are at a liturgy, gathered into one body to encounter the real presence of Christ in our midst. Like Mary, we are called to say yes to this moment and offer ourselves to await his arrival. This fourth Sunday in Advent, our imaginative prayer contemplation is on a reading from Luke. In imaginative prayer, a key thing to remember when praying is to enjoy it. Maybe you're imagining sitting beside him, or Jesus embracing you. If you've prayed at the start to open your heart to God, trust that God is communicating with you. Relish the experience. Then, see where it leads. What kind of emotions, feelings, memories, desires, and insights arise? What might God be trying to tell you? Or perhaps God just wants you to enjoy sitting quietly with Him. So, let's give it a go now. First, take a moment to still yourself. Ask God to open your heart, your imagination, and invite Him in. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. As we begin, Use your senses to picture yourself in the prayer story of the visitor. Imagine you are sitting in your armchair. You are back home after a long tiring day at work. You decide to rest for half an hour to catch your breath. As you sit there, you pick up a book from the coffee table. It's about the life of Mother Mary. 
you've been reading at this Advent, hoping to gain some insight into how she lived, so you can bring some of that into your own life. But she seems so brave and obedient, in a way you think you could never be. As you settle into the sofa, you open the book. Suddenly, you hear someone ringing the doorbell. Who might that be? I'm not expecting anyone, you think. When you open the door, you see a young man in a hat standing there. He is looking down, holding his hands gently in front of him, his fingers wrapped around each other. Can I help you, you ask? He looks up at you, in a quite angelic way. A slight smile comes across his face. I have come to share some news with you. Good news. Important news, he says. You are puzzled. Do I know you, you ask. No you don't, he replies. But I know you. This is feeling a little weird, so you begin to back up into the house. Don't be afraid, please, the man says, his head lowered respectfully. You're not sure what's happening. You want to go inside and shut the door, but something keeps you standing here. What do you want to tell me, you ask nervously. Slowly he raises his head and says, God wants you to carry his voice into your world. In the place you work, in your home, wherever you go. God wants you to carry his news of hope to all. Taken aback by what you just heard, you ask, is this a joke? Did my brother put you up to this? The man looks down calmly. Then he raises his face, and your eyes meet. He smiles, turns, and walks away. Wait, you call out. You didn't answer my question. Who are you? He turns back to look at you. He looks up at the sky, points to his heart, and disappears into the rows and rows of houses. We pause here to speak to the Lord. How might you carry the good news of Christ to others this coming year? With that, we conclude our prayer contemplation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This has been Take 5 with Iggy. To watch this again, go to our YouTube channel, or to our website.